88.5. It is Brother John, your brother from another mother like no other. And ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while. But listen, it's all about these students. And I'm about to pass it to my, my uh, partner in crime, holding it down, Miss Nina, to talk about what's going on on the next edition of the Congress Speaks. Take it away, Nina. Thank you, John. Hello, everyone. It is so nice to be able to talk to you all again today and we are going to be talking about students who have disabilities students who have special needs in SES and this can even pertain to people who aren't even in SES schools because children with disabilities they don't get a lot of um, media or attention to their issues when it pertains to education and so today I am joined by Miss Shanti Holly Moore. She is a mother of five children, including one who has a special needs, a disability, and she is also a part of many boards um, nationally and um, statewide that pertain to passing bills and helping parents and students who have um, disabilities and special needs. And she is also my mother. So, Miss Holly Moore, welcome. And would you please introduce yourself? Thank you. Uh, I am so happy to be here today um, in support of families with children who have special needs. I'll, I'll say that I am a, the mem a member of the Shelby County Schools Exceptional Children Advisory Council. So um, they do really good work and have workshops for parents that um, can help you. Um, also, I was just um, seated on the Governor's Disability Council, Tennessee Council on Developmental Disabilities this year. I also am a part of the Down Syndrome Association for the Mid-South because that's what my daughter, my daughter Michaela has Down Syndrome. Or um, also I'm a part of the Tennessee, the Arts of Tennessee. Uh, um, statewide, and I am a part of the ARC Mid South. Wow, you and do. A five. <laughs> I'm you a do mom five. of five girls. <laughs> yes. She does quite a lot. She's very active in the community, and her biggest job is community service and being a mom. And it is um, a job that she does very well, I can say, from the outside looking in. And she has a lot of knowledge and today she'll be sharing some resources and just all the information that she has known um, for helping even kids who don't have um, special needs. And likewise, she's been a part of so many PTOs and as you heard, many board um, boards and things of that nature. So Miss Collymore, if I may ask, we are in a pandemic, as you know, how hard was it transitioning having a child who has special needs and going online? Oh, wow, that was a really, that was a really hard transition to try to get a child to understand that you can't be with your friends and you have to learn in a different way. It was, it was a hard transition because uh, Michaela is a hands-on student where, you know, she has to see the flashcards and, you know, re repetition helps her learn. So being virtual was, was a hard transition and you had to get her to sit there, you know, for a couple of hours. So a few brain breaks were great, you know, to help during the day, but it was really hard to try to get her to stay seated in front of the um, the uh, device to learn. And I will say that she also, she would give the, the tablet a hug when she would see her friends and her teachers. She would hug it or she would give the tablet a kiss, you know, to just say hi to them. But it was it was kind of hard to get adjusted to. How well do you think SES has been handling um, students who have special needs because they learn different? Yeah, that's true. Everyone learns differently. So 
I, I would say that um, Shelby County Schools has done everything they can to the best of their ability because they've, they've provided tools for us. And, and I would say it's on the, the teacher in the school as well. You know, it, it starts with you as a parent saying, okay, my daughter or my, my son, my child needs this. You know, because some children may have um, a problem. Some children may learn visually or may not be able to learn visually or they may have uh, a hearing impairment. So basically everything is individual. You know, so something that my child may need, another child may not need. And so it, it, it would have to be individual and start from the bottom up. You know, so the, 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 from the top, providing the resources and the, the, the things that are needed is helpful. So I can't say that for me personally, um, you know, that I, I think that the school the school system has done a really good job at trying. And I would say that my child's teacher has done a good job at bringing manipulatives to the home, like leaving things outside or telling us, hey, come up to the school and pick up this item that can help your child, like um, some worksheets or uh, hands-on tools, like the, uh, the therapist will might send uh, manipulatives as well. So things like that help. And then you as a parent, you have to say, hey, I, I found this. Um, I, I, you might find something that you might want to implement in your child's learning. So then you talk to your teacher about it. You talk to the principal. You know, you have to, you have to, we're, we're all a team. So we all have to work together. And if you don't speak up for your child, no, no one else will know. So that's the, that's the main point. But I would say the school system has done the best they can to the best of their ability, I think they've done a, done a good job. Ms. Colin Moore, this is Janice, and I have a quick question. I was watching a special on the Today, Today Show, and it was talking about, they had these parents on there, and they felt like their child with special needs had lost some of the gains that they had made over the couple of years, uh, just in this last year. Uh, have you noticed that Michaela has, has um, lost some of the gains that she had made or if not then how did you avoid that how did you keep her like at the same pace uh how did you manage to do that if not well i i really can't say we will have testing and things like that but for for me personally i just kept trying to reinforce things uh by when I'm when we're not on the device, I'll do flashcards with her. I'll do um, things with worksheets. Read to her. That was the most important thing. Read, 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 read stories to her. So that I, I can't say that there's a lot of loss or or not, but you just have to stay on it and keep doing your best because I know it's it's really hard to get used to using technology or or even the different things, but you just have to keep going. And, and, and hopefully the school, the school system will have uh, a resource for us to, to recapture those gains with some things in the summertime. Uh, if if I may, because I uh, I love this because um, during our committee meeting, <clears throat> one of the board members had asked if we could ever um, interview or have a parent on to talk about this very subject that we're talking about. So thank you, Miss Janice and uh, Nina and Sarah. But Miss Collymore, my question uh, to to you is: You talked about SES, you know, doing the best that they can with what they have. But what would you say that's something that they can uh, prove on or something that maybe we can do to to help in the future for uh, other parents that's dealing with a situation such as yours? Oh, yes. Um, like I said, everything is individual. So we you would have to ask the parents, like maybe have a survey. You know, have a survey to find out um, what parents need specifically because each child is individual. 
right. and try to provide uh, maybe some extra support. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the speech, the speech, uh, OTPT, maybe if they can't receive that virtually, because I know that's really hard. That's the, that's the really hard part is trying to teach that virtually, but mm -hmm. just different ways to have that resource available outside of the, the school system, mm -hmm. uh, maybe over the summer, that can help to help uh, catch up with the, the loss. And providing manip manipulatives, like hands-on activities for the parents, whether you mail that out to them or have them come pick it up, manipulatives can help with the, um, you know, when you're virtual, the computer can only do so much. Right, right. I think hands-on hands is always, hands-on is always the best thing. You know, that's, that's what they're experiencing in school, the hands-on activities, the, um, you know, stacking blocks and things like that. So if they can do things like that, I think it'll be really helpful. And, and like you all are doing, reach out to the parents specifically and ask them, what can we do? And I think those are the things that can help help us all help the students. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll make Did sure. You, um, this is Janice again. Did Michaela go back in person once we went to the hybrid or did you keep her, still keep her at home? Oh, no, ma'am. She, she stayed at home. When the teacher explained to me how things would be, um, being that that was her first time experiencing school um, before this pandemic, and she was used to going to housekeeping or sitting in the library area, um, and they explained to me that they wouldn't be able to do all those things. Mm. I know she wouldn't understand that, and she would probably, she's a hugger. And, you know, she will, she won't, she would not understand, like, oh, I can't hug my friends. I can't go walk and hold their hand like we used to do. So she, she stayed at home um, yeah. for the rest of the year. I was sharing with Nina that my, um, my brother, he's 54 years old and he has Down syndrome. And the pandemic has really, really affected him because he went to work every day. You know, he, he had this little job that uh, that he went to every day with 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 people that were in a group home. Of course, he was not in a group home, but he went every day and he had a routine. And since then, he's he's really uh, he's been really sad and uh, depressed. And and so we had to he was living in Mississippi and we had to go to get him because he was he was really sad. He was he was feeling really isolated because Everything his whole, you know, and you can relate that they have a routine and they don't like their routine to be messed with. So he had a routine that he had every day. And then on Sundays, he went to church. So it's like all of a sudden, everything that he was used to was gone. All of his friends were gone. He didn't, he couldn't go to church anymore. And so we've really been working with him as a family to kind of help him stay um, active. Uh, and just kind of keep his mind uh, focused and keep him engaged so he doesn't have that just that alone time so much uh, because it really it really did affect him um, because you know they he likes certain things you know like he he likes to hug he likes to be with his friends and uh, and everything in his life was was changed and as for us you know that don't have uh, special needs then we can adjust but they don't quite adjust because their minds are, uh, are are not built like ours, so to speak. So, and we we had a very difficult time, and we're still working with him, though, know, just trying to get him to to accept that things probably would never go back to what he he the way that he had it, uh, you know. So, it's been difficult for our family from that sense, and not not just you know him being a student or anything, because like I said, he's he's fifty four. And uh, but it's been very difficult for us. Oh wow! Thank you for sharing that with me, Miss Janice. What What is your brother's name, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, his name is Tony. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> oh well, I'm so sorry to hear that, and I do understand they they do have a a schedule and just love to do the, the you know have a routine. 
So yeah. yes, ma'am, that is, that is so true. And that's what I, I have to do to try to supplement the therapy. I've, I bought a, a trampoline and, you know, just different things that I could try to do and just go for walks and things like that or go to the park when, when it, when they open back up. So I, I, I do agree with you on that. And, and just to add to that, Michaela will not wear a mask, but she'll do the face shield, but she, she will not, she doesn't understand, uh, you know, the, the, the practicality of wearing a mask. So that's a part of it too. Mm -hmm. yeah, for us. Thank you for sharing that, Ms. Collymore, and also emphasizing that when having a child with um, a special ability, with special needs, that it's very individual and there's a spectrum. So it's just like um, any other students who don't have special needs, we all learn different as well. And it's even more so for students who have special needs. So indiv individualism is very important in that sense. And I wanted to ask you, you know, you're a part of many um, organizations, so I, you probably have a well of um, resources to share with parents. So if you don't mind, what are some of the resources that you have used um, during this pandemic or just in general that other parents who have children with special needs can use as well? Oh, well, there's a great wealth of um, information that can be found at uh, many organizations. Some organizations specifically speak to certain disabilities like the Down Syndrome Association. And then so um, they help, they're a group that helps other families with uh, disabilities uh, or Down Syndrome, I apologize. And then the ARC, the ARC of the Mid-South, they deal with disabilities uh, that range from many different uh, disabilities. Um, it's a, the Arc of the Mid-South, and parents can reach out to that organization as well. And then there's a statewide, the Ten Tennessee Disability Pathfinder. You can find out information. That is a, a website that you can put in anything like camps or, or um, you know, just different resources as well. And for Shelby County Schools, the SDS Exceptional Student, you can, of course, call 901-416-5600. And you can find out um, how to get help at Shelby County Schools. Thank you so much for that information. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us today, um, letting SDS specifically know um, when they are making decisions for parents, for the children who have special needs, what they should consider? Oh, yes, please consider the parents and the children as well. Uh, please consider their their uh, feelings and it, it's a, we're, we're all in this together. We, it takes a community and, and to include our children in things and not just seclude them. Um, and keep them secluded. I think inclusion in the community is the best thing. And I love what you said about your brother, Tony. He had a job and things like that. And include our children at every stage of life because we all are a community. Thank you so much for sharing that. Mr. John, Mr. Best, do you have anything else to add to this conversation? I'm glad that you all brought this topic to the public and Ms. McDaniel, somebody just hit me up on Facebook asking who was the woman who's talking about her brother, Tony, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> you all are, you, you all may not realize it, Nina, Sarah and Janice. And um, I guess, you know, you never know who's listening. And for you all and for the mother to speak about what she's been experiencing with Shelby County Schools, you know, good, bad or whatever. I'm just thankful we had a parent in a situation like that to be able to share because this sometimes we don't get to talk about these things on a public platform such as this. But because with uh, uh, Student Congress, you all can have these types of conversations and bring it to life and make people say, hey, we also have 
our special needs students who are getting taken care of. Well, Shelby County Schools, y'all might can do this in the summertime. The mom said, maybe give us a survey because every child is different. I mean, we need these kind of difficult conversations so that we can make progress. So the next time we talk to this mother, she can say, look, I talked to uh, Shelby County Schools. They did this. They got with the right departments and everything got figured out because it's all about these students and parents. I cannot stress that enough. So, so Ms. Janice, Sarah, Nina, uh, my hat's off to you all for going down this road of talking about. You just don't know how much I'm so happy because I was, our, one of our board members did say, I would love to hear somebody talk about uh, our special needs and some of our parents like you're doing today. So this is, this is outstanding. Thank you, Janice. Thank you, Nina and Sarah. Thank y'all. Yes, thank, thank you, Miss Collin Moore. And thank oh, you, thank Nina. You. And happy birthday, Nina. Thank oh, happy birthday, and, Nina. And today is Michaela's birthday. Oh, wow. Y'all going out How old is Michaela now? Um, she, she's, she's six eight. years old. Yes, she's yeah, six. She, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, wow. That's cool. That's really cool. I, I'm so grateful to you all for allowing. Uh, this conversation. So thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Kyla Moore, for entrusting Nina, you know, in my care for these last two years. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I, um, I I don't even know how I could have done parts of my job this year if I hadn't had her. She just stepped in on so many occasions to help out the Department of Student Affairs. And when the district as a whole needed a student and needed a voice, always count on Nina. So thank you for just entrusting her, you know, in our care. I really, really appreciate that. That's right. Thank you, Ms. Janice. I appreciate you all, Mr. Best. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Well, I'll but close this out then. Thank you all so much for listening. Please feel free to reach out, uh, like Ms. Collymore said, to that number. Uh, Mr. Best, you could probably play it on air again for uh, parents who need more resources. Yeah. And Yes, just continue to have conversations, continue to ask for help. It is never to each other, work together with each other and help each other out. So be blessed, have a great rest of the day. And yeah, thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Nina and our whole team and student Congress. Shout out to everybody involved. There's so many people to thank. I mean, starting with Dr. Lori Phillips, um, Family Community Engagement, Department of Student Affairs. I mean, it's just so many people that's, that help put this together. And I cannot thank Ms. Janice enough because when we had this idea some years ago, who knew we would still be going strong years later? later, putting the students first and talking about these types of topics that we have that Nina and the team come up with to help and to go through a pandemic and we still here doing this type of work. It's a testament to the people that's all making this possible. So Ms. Janice, thank you so much again. And Nina, keep doing your thing. Sarah and everybody involved, let's get ready for the next one because it's, it's, I think the momentum is coming back. So I look forward to this, okay? All right, let's get back to the music. We are 88.5 FM. Bye.